Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video, I want to draw your attention to uh, this very interesting report um, put out by the Copernicus people um, in Europe on, it's called the Ocean State Report. It's the seventh edition of the Copernicus Ocean State Report 2023, came out late last year. So it's a very comprehensive report on what's going on in the oceans. Now there is a regional focus to oceans um, in the Northern Hemisphere around Europe, but it does have articles and papers on all parts of the ocean. Um, and basically um, it's updated every year. So it's part of the Copernicus Marine Service. It's the Ocean State Report, OSR. It was launched in 2015, this project. So it's a key tool of the, um, for, the, for the Copernicus, the European uh, Union uh, system to report on oceans with, like I said, a focus around Europe. But it, is cover, it does have global coverage. So it reports on the state variability and ongoing changes in the marine environment of the global ocean and the European regional seas over the past decades up to close to real time. So it uses observation-based um, remote sensing, uh, ocean reanalysis data, and they say, they talk about how it covers uh, four dimensions. The four dimensions of latitude, longitude, ocean depth, and time. And they talk about ana the analysis of what they call the blue, green, and white ocean. So the blue ocean, the normal ocean, I guess the green ocean is the life in, in the ocean, and the white ocean, the, the frozen uh, cryosphere parts of the ocean. So they intend this document as a reference, providing a unique ocean monitoring dashboard for the scientific community and for policymakers and others with decision-making responsibilities. So documenting changes over time in, in the uh, state of the oceans and also you know, the state of the, pli the planet. The state of the planet is a journal dedicated to the publication of scientific reports and assessments on all subjects of the earth and environmental science. In a rapidly changing world, expert-based assessments of academic findings curated for a wider audience to support decision-making, science communication, education, you know, funding mandates, etc. You know, the IPCC reports are too infrequent. So this is an attempt to fill in the gaps between, you know, and, 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 and sort of have an ongoing yearly report focused on, on the oceans. Okay, so basically what they're doing is the Copernicus Ocean State Report, it basically gathers an ensemble of peer-reviewed publications. It analyzes the state, the variability, and the trend of the physics and biogeochemistry of the oceans and sea ice. So the physics of the oceans is the blue ocean part. The biogeochemistry, um, is the green part, and the sea ice is the uh, white ocean part. So, so the, o the global ocean is covered, but there is a focus on European regional seas. And the target audience is the scientific community, policymakers, industries, and the general public. Okay, so the analysis is based on the Copernicus marine products like most people know of the copernicus as the satellites the european satellites to monitor the earth so they prepare this report um, each year there's basically 14 period papers that are in this uh, report so I'll, i'm not going to go into the details of all of them but i'll just uh, give you sort of an overview and you can focus on ones this is open source so you can just go you know, if you want to check out a specific topic. So this is really just an awareness video to let you know about this report and uh, what it covers, give you kind of an executive summary. So there's a paper on marine heat waves, how they're becoming more frequent, 
and they're and more extensive globally, whereas marine cold spells are becoming less frequent. Except in the Southern Ocean, there's often marine cold spells in some regions. Um, there is a record low reduction in the oceanic heat exchange across the Greenland to Scotland Ridge. So there's less heat going being carried in the oceans, about four to nine percent less heat relative to a reference period of 1993 to 2020. Um, and it started around the year 2018. Um, there's an, a paper on how, how an intense and long long lasting storm in the Balearic Islands, this is I think Western Mediterranean, caused modified the oceans, caused intense upwelling, reversed regional currents, and caused extremely cold surface temperatures. So, so things like that can happen. There were unusual coccolithopore blooms um, in the summer of 2021 in Scottish waters. We know that we're getting record warm temperatures up in the oceans in the in the northern far northern hemisphere, mid to far northern hemisphere. Um, extreme wave events have been occurring off and impacting the eastern coast of South America and offshore regions, creating coastal hazards in the Sao Paulo uh, area. There's a paper on long term warming trends in ocean waters below 150 meters in the Iberia Biscay Ireland region between 1993 and 2021. The salinity in the upper 300 meters of the Mediterranean Sea has increased in the last three decades. Um, and there's an overall decrease in ocean fresh water content in the Baltic Sea over the last two decades. There's a potential regime shift happening in the regional circulation in the southern Adriatic Sea. Um, there's different um, changes in the, in the timing of appearance of the phenology or, or life timing of phytoplankton functional types in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, except, uh, you know, for, for, for trend, the trends. Okay, Intre increase in uh, abrupt increase in diatoms in the North Atlantic. Uh, coastal upwelling changes um, off the Iberian Peninsula, a change in the um, suspended materials composition, organic versus inorganic. Um, looked at in the English Channel and, and the Southern North Sea. Ocean variability. Um, a paper looked at the variability of the South Atlantic meridional overturning circulation and the meridional heat transport. Okay, when we talk about meridional heat transport, you know, we gen generally tend to focus on the North Atlantic, the AMOC, but this is looking at the South Atlantic meridional overturning. Um, wave energy is, is also examined. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's loads of loads of interesting stuff there in papers. So. So th this is, um, if you want to get an overview of the whole report, um, this is the thing to read. The uh, paper is called The Introduction to the Seventh Edition of the Copernicus Ocean State Report, OSR 7. Um, there, it's in the journal State of the Planet, you know, all of, all of these articles actually, I believe. So of course, changes in the ocean state affect the well-being of the planet, its ecosystems and human societies. The ocean is home to a vast array of plant and animal species, many of which are still undiscovered. It's hence critical in supporting global biodiversity and sustaining complex ecosystems. All right, the ocean plays a vital role in regulating Earth's climate. It's a massive heat sink, a massive carbon sink. Um, and uh, yeah, it's critical. It's intimately, intricately affected by climate change Rising sea levels, warming, deoxygenation, and acidification of the ocean, changing currents, loss of sea ice and biodiversity all pose significant risks to coastal communities, infrastructure, economies, and vulnerable ecosystems. Overexploitation and ocean pollution, including plastic waste, chemical contaminants, etc., can harm both marine life and human health, posing risks 
through the food chain and direct exposure. Okay, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's a really, if you want to get a really good current update on the state of the oceans, this is a must-read uh, report. Okay, and uh, there's a couple diagrams here about specific um, region, specific changes in the oceans around northern, around Europe. So in the English Channel, the Clyde Sea, the Baltic Sea, the Adriatic Sea, the Mediterranean, the Iberian, Biscay, Ireland region. The, this is the Balearic Sea, Western Mediterranean. Okay, okay, so there's lots of, these are areas that are covered in papers in this report. And if you look at the global ocean areas that are covered, Greenland, Scotland Ridge, um, the changes in heat ex ocean heat exchange, changes in the North Atlantic, um, in diatoms, subtropical Atlantic, uh, tropical Atlantic and South Atlantic, changes there, changes in the Southern Ocean with marine heat waves are less frequent, marine cold spells are more frequent off Antarctica as the ice continues to melt and the um, the Arctic, the Antarctic sea ice had huge decline, so it's causing, ca affecting these things. Uh, changes in the wave action in the southwest, South Atlantic. Um, okay, so basically global coverage um, in, is, is, is covered in, just in this, uh, you know, in this report. So if you want to specifically look at any of those topics, uh, this is the place to do it. So there's a paper on the evaluation of operational ocean forecasting systems. Um, you know, the different systems in place. Uh, the Intergovernmental Oceanic Commission has an Ocean, ocean Decade Implementation Plan. Um, they want to be able to monitor the oceans and predict what is happening. So there's a lot of information in this article on it. Um, I'm not going to cover the details of any of these papers. Comparing global trends in marine cold spells and marine heat waves using reprocessed satellite data. So climate change, of course, is causing extreme climate events to become more frequent and severe. That includes um, ocean events, marine heat waves, MHWs, and marine cold spells, MCSs are prolonged discrete periods of anomalously high or low ocean temperatures with wide ranging impacts from dramatic shifts in biodiversity to changes in fishery yields. MHWs are increasing in frequency and intensity. MCSs are less, less well understood. Okay, so they look at sea surface temperature data and the changes in the marine heat waves around the planet. Um, then the next paper is talking about the South Atlantic overturning ocean circulation and heat transport variations in ocean reanalysis and observations. So the variability in the South Atlantic meridional overturning circulation and meridional heat transport across 34.5 degrees south latitude during 2013 to 17 differs significantly between observational and reanalysis. So they talk about, um, you know, what's causing the changes. And, uh, you know, this is very important because it ties into the AMOC, of course, in the um, Northern Hemisphere. And then the next paper uh, in the report is satellite monitoring of surface phytoplankton, different functional types in the Atlantic Ocean over 20 years from 2002 to 2021. Okay, they use multi-satellite derived products. They look at four major phytoplankton functional types. They look at diatoms, haptophytes, prokaryotes, and dinoflagellates. To look at the time series and trends and how climate change is affecting the plankton in the ocean in this paper. Um, then the next paper is on uh, the dynamical role of upper upper layer salinity in the Mediterranean Sea. So the Mediterranean, of course, is a semi-enclosed basin. There's an excess amount of evaporation compared to water influx through precipitation 
at the surface and river runoff at the land boundaries, also water coming in from the, the main ocean. The deficit in this water budget is balanced by the inflow in the Strait of Gibraltar and Turkish Strait system connecting the Mediterranean and the less salty, less saline Atlantic Ocean and Black Sea respectively. The Mediterranean region is a hot spot in a warming climate, which will possibly change the water cycle significantly. So um, it's basically, um, so, so this paper look, monitors it. It looks at the salinity content in, in the top zero to 300 meters during the last decades and uh, examines the changes um, that are happening from the warming. You know, the, the Mediterranean Sea is warming a lot it's evaporating more and more, so it's becoming saltier. There's more and more marine heat waves. There's these uh, phenomena called metacanes, which are hurricanes within the basin. Um, okay, so they look at all the so-called EOVs, the essential ocean variables, um, to understand how climate change is affecting the Mediterranean. So very fascinating paper. And I'll just touch on some, let you know some of the other titles. Baltic Sea, freshwater content. You know, the Baltic Sea is a brackish shallow sea. The state's determined by mixing of fresh water from that precipitation and runoff with the salty water from the North Sea inflows. Okay, so the study looks at that. Um, and I'll just move on here. Uh, there's um, high frequency radar derived coastal upwelling. So that's being studied. Uh, coastal upwelling has been extensively studied since it plays a critical role in the connectivity between offshore waters and coastal ecosystems that impacts water quality, fisheries, and aquaculture along coastlines. So they look at the, they generate this coastal upwelling index. It's derived from wind, sea level pressure, sea surface temperature to see how much upwelling is happening because upwelling is vital because it brings up nutrients, which allows uh, phytoplankton to proliferate, uh, which is very important for, the, for, for fish uh, proliferation in coastal waters. Um, I'll just move on uh, here. Then the next paper is on ocean heat content changes in the Iberian, Biscay, Ireland regional seas. Uh, so ocean heat content, how it's changing. Again, a lot of warming in this region, part of the world. Uh, okay, uh, dissolved oxygen as an indicator of multiple drivers of the marine ecosystem. They look at the Southern Adriatic Sea as a case study. So, you know, oxygen is essential for all aerobic organisms. Its dynamics in the ocean involve interconnected physical and biological processes that form the basis of the marine ecosystem. So dissolved oxygen variations, you know, under climate change under, with multiple drivers is one of the main goals of climate and marine ecological scientific communities, right? The quantification of dissolved oxygen levels is essential for the assessment of the environmental status, especially in coastal areas. Okay, so dissolved oxygen, you know, crucial and of course, uh, you know, the water temperature and the ocean currents, all those things are crucial um, for determining dissolved oxygen content. They looked at the, this paper looked at the organic material versus inorganic material in suspended particle, particulate matter in coastal waters. They used satellites to look at the ocean color by um, remote sensing from instruments on satellites to see, uh, so looking at the color of the ocean to determine about uh, dissolved particles, etc. Um, and uh, then there's this paper, the recent changes in extreme wave events in the southwestern South Atlantic. So this is interesting. So over the past decades, the South Atlantic Ocean has experienced several changes, including a reported increase in coastal erosion and flooding. So there's been an increase in the in chain in, in the extreme wave events over the southwest South Atlantic. Okay, so extreme wave events. They looked at statistics and analyzed it, and uh, you know looked at wave uh, height, wave periodicity, wave power, um, 
and then they examined how that was impacting coastlines. So there's an increasing number of coastal hazards in the state of Sao Paulo associated with waves. That agrees with the increase in the number of extreme wave events in the adjacent ocean. And uh, there's also other coastal factors involved. Okay, so that's one of the things with climate change. We're getting higher and higher wave action in that region. Unusual coccolithopore blooms in Scottish waters during the summer of 2021. Um, and they looked at satellite data and saw these different blooms and tried to identify causes. Is it the warming water? Is it the change in ocean currents? Things like that. And uh, another paper is uh, they looked at the transport of, of heat in the ocean across the Greenland-Scotland Ridge. And uh, that plays a crucial role in shaping the Arctic climate and linking the AMOC um, and linking with the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation. Okay, so they looked at the salinity. They, they, there was basically, they, they saw a marked reduction in oceanic heat flux across the Greenland-Scotland Ridge of four to nine percent uh, compared to the 1993 to 2020 means during a two-year period centered on 2018. Um, temporarily reduction of the geostratic Atlantic water inflow, you know, could be due to slowing uh, AMOC. So this is a very interesting and significant paper. And then finally, the last one is uh, they looked at intense wind-driven coastal upwelling um, in the Balearic Islands in response to this storm which occurred November 2021. So this is in the Western Mediterranean. Um, as the wind patterns change and storms go through, it could really change the, has a huge impact on the ocean. And in this case, it, the winds drove a coastal upwelling, surge of nutrients going to the surface, surge of phytoplankton, etc. Okay, so uh, this is a very uh, comprehensive report. Um, if you want to know what the latest is on the ocean state um, around the world or specifically in regions around Europe, then this is the report to go to and I'll provide a link um, in my description, in my video description. Okay, so some really cool stuff on the ocean. Please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating at my PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks for listening and bye for now.